when it comes to the law, if it says something, it's uh, because they need to clarify that. Right. That tells me that somewhere, and I've, I haven't looked it up. Oh, my goodness. Somewhere, someone thought that women were still chattel, so they had to make it clear in the state of Oregon, just because you got married doesn't mean that you that your husband owns you. Oh, my goodness. I, I, well, I mean, I, ultimately, I think that's a good thing, and that, 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 that clarification is is a positive thing and good yes. on Oregon. However, but the, the fact that clarification have- needed <laughs> to be made, that's very disturbing, yes. <laughs> By the way, how many letters, I, 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 it's got to be in the dozens, how many letters or, or greeting cards uh, on the outside of the envelope, like have, have you had addressed to you by the name of of your husband, I can tell you that my wife, like especially by my parents and uh, and other people over the years, have had dozens of letters to them, even after they've been told numerous times and they've known who we are that that she is she still has her last name and she hasn't ha- hasn't taken mine, and that's something that we decided <laughs> from the very beginning. How many times has that happened to you? I'm just curious. What really upsets me, um, and this is my mother. Uh-huh. My mother, um, my mother burned her bra in the '60s. She uh-huh. was awesome. Uh-huh. Um, she gave me our bodies ourselves when I turned nine, so uh-huh. I could learn and everything. Um, what she told me is, "You are not Mrs. You never were. You don't belong to somebody. You are Miss." Good for her. And so, when I see, if I see Mrs., you know, and and then the man's name. Mm-hmm. I and then my name isn't even there. Like I don't even exist. Yeah. That's and right. it just and I hear my mother in the back of my head and I'm and I feel like even though it may not be intentional the like I was saying, you know, we live in this society, we are part of it. Um we are conditioned by our parents and the and the norms and the things we see on television, the way we see people behaving. And it, there's no intention to offend me or to belittle me, but that in itself is yeah. diminutive. Yeah, they, they, it, they've erased your family line in in one fell swoop. They've and, even erased me. I yeah. don't even. I'm Mrs. Right. His name. Right. Yeah. The whole name, not just the last name. Yeah. Also. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of that 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 it really get. I because you know if I if I'm reading an old book or something and it says like. You know, you know, Mrs. John Smith or something like that. Mm-hmm. It's it's creepy sounding. It really is. I can I can I can see the yellow wallpaper. But uh, they it, want that. You yeah. know, that's why they're trying to get rid of no fault divorce. Yeah. They don't. They hated in the eighties. They watched their fathers, um, their mothers leave their their fathers in mm-hmm. the eighties in the big mass exodus. It mm-hmm. was because it was yes, it was legal, but it was socially unacceptable. Yeah. Um, I had a family member who had to leave her husband who was abusive and she came to my grandfather who owned an apartment building and was able to put her up. But that was because nobody would rent to her. This is 1973. Wow. Nobody would rent to her. Wow. And she had to leave. He was abusive. He yeah. was intoxicated all the time. Mm. So she was lucky that we had that kind of family thing going on. Most women are not. And so in the 80s, when there was a huge boom in divorce, it's because women were fighting for their lives and they could finally be free. Now you're trying to bring us back in there. Because why? Because you think that you're owed one of us? Because just because you are a nice guy and you paid for the meal that you are owed something, even in that, even in the idea that you are somehow owed a romantic relationship because you're a nice guy, that in itself is a mindset that perpetuates going all the way to Missouri telling pregnant women that no matter what, we got to see the baby before we can decide how much he's worth and, and uh, how many times the dad can see him. We, we really have, is- we, we have so many things to change. I mean, I mean, uh, I, I know that I was brought up with that and so many biases in, in, in the back of, of my mindset. And, and there really is a mentality of absolute entitlement from, from which I'm still recovering. And and we have to do so much better in terms of educating, especially, I mean, every part of society, but especially boys. I mean, they, they and, and, and it's starting to change, but but all the pieces are, are still so pervasive. Like from we, the, Yeah, we the, really need yeah. to. It's enough, okay? Just because I dress a certain way does is not an invitation, but we are yeah. not following up on the other side. 
not enough. And I know that there are stragglers out there who are doing the right thing. And I appreciate you, but we need to, as a society, start teaching boys yesterday yeah. that there are boundaries. And I don't care how you think or feel that's a human being who is an independent person with the same rights as you. And yeah. you cannot invade their space. Yeah. And, and, and we don't teach that to that. We, we, you know, I, I, I think, I think really the default as far as I'm able to perceive and understand it is that your basic human being is, 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 is a, is a man and a, a white man that looks a particular way and acts a particular way. And these are the things that, that have been like, like stuck in my head for a long time. And I'm just like beginning to like, like process and a- acknowledge them but I, I I think I mean we really have to actively like address that and and disentangle that because those even to this day those are the sets of ideas that we send like boys out into the world with that like that half of humanity is and more than half of humanity the vast majority of, <laughs> of, 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 of humanity when you take all those other a- aspects in, in, into consideration is just is, is fundamentally not human when you look at when you develop a standard human in your head when we have the vision that we do of of god as 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 a white bearded guy in, in in the sky if you happen to believe in god and it's 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 just nonsensical it, it and it's so it's so destructive and it's so harmful and that's the root of where all of these other things come from and it gets taught to us at such an early age by parents by teachers by advertising by messages all around us and it, and it's it, it's difficult to unsee once once you start seeing it because it's yeah, everywhere. like think about this. I'll give you an example. Two Meg Ryan movies. Uh-huh. Okay, Sleepless in Seattle is yeah. hailed as like the most romantic movie ever. Right. She is crazy. That is psychotic. She left a long term relationship with okay, a not yeah. you know kind of boring dopey guy, but he's good and he's trustworthy and he's dependable. And she's about to marry him because she heard some dude on the on the radio for real, <laughs> and then she she crosses state lines. She stalks him. All sorts of. That's crazy. That is not romance. You know what is romance? The movie French Kiss with Meg Ryan and Kevin Klein, where she overcomes a fear of flying so she can try and get her cheating um, fiance back. But in the in the course of it, she realizes her self-worth, which is empowered by an unlikely source, which is Kevin Klein. And they end up together where she can be a free, independent woman And he is just along for the ride to experience her, not to control her, to experience what it's like to be with her, which is something her ex-fiance never gave her until she left. Of course, that's when they want you. These two movies came out around, you know, the same time and um, within the same decade of each other. And they are completely different in their messaging, not only to men, but to women. I, I'm going to check that out. I, I, you know, I, I've seen, it's been a long time, but I've, I've seen Sleepless in Seattle. I have not seen French Kiss, but I, I, this is now another Tom Hanks movie that I've, I've begun to de- deconstruct in my head. Like for a long time, I was the biggest fan of, uh, of uh, Forrest Gump. And then I listened to uh, my, my favorite Canadian socialist uh, uh, movie review podcast, Michael and uh, Michael and us. Yeah, I've 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 had uh, Luke Luke Savage on the show before, and I I listened to their episode about that. And I realized this really is a very reactionary film, and I hadn't thought about <laughs> all of those things before. And and, and again, get, that gets stuck in your mind because like things like things movies like like uh, like uh, Forrest Gump and movies like um, I'm sorry, I've forgotten the name of it now. Um, uh, sleepless, sleepless, in sleepless in Seattle. They get st- <laughs> they get stuck in your in, in your mind as emotional baggage, and you don't think about them because you just associate them with emotional experience that you had when you saw it. And so you yes, don't... and that's what teenagers do, and right. then they become young adults and they emulate. Right. So they go after, and they think that. See, here's where it gets like squirrely. Um, so we we think that the grand gesture is the explanation for all of the bad things that he's been doing to us. Right. And we ignore the red flags because he made this grand gesture and then we, we forgive him. 
that is that is what a relationship with a narcissist looks like. But we don't yeah. portray it that way. We put it in a rom com, right. and it's romantic. Right. And so, what do you expect when you have these messages going out to women, to to young girls all the time? Moms for Liberty, where are you? And Doctor Nation. Yeah. And then they go out into the world and they look for these things. They push aside the healthy relationships because they they think no red flags, no passion. Yeah. And so they end up in these narcissistic relationships and, and are abused and are neglected and give up or or just have a terrible time dating and finding someone because we've given them all the wrong signs and all the wrong signals to look for. The red flags, we've turned them into great, you know, displays of, yes, this is what you should be looking for. And a, a man should always do a grand gesture. You know what's a grand gesture in, in my marriage? Every single morning he wakes up, he calls me sweetheart and he gives me a kiss. Yeah. Every single morning, he's yeah. happy to see me. Yeah, That's the grand gesture. Yeah. When he helps out, when he does things, I don't even have to tell him. He's he's the partner in the relationship. Yeah. He knows something's dirty. He cleans it. Yeah. When when he consoles me, when he asks me how I'm doing, when he sees that my I, I've got resting bitch face and he just wants to know <laughs> if I'm OK, that is the grand gesture. But but that's not romantic and that's not in right. a rom-com. Right. So we don't know to look for these signals. Right. It's the day. It's the day to day relationship and the day to day, you know, uh, you know, understanding and perceiving and hearing and, um, boy, you know, boring it, stuff. It, it, boring stuff. <laughs> you know, it, it, occur, it occurs to me, you know, I, <laughs> I'm a big fan of Turner Classic movies. I'm afraid I have a lot of you know, there over the past like five, ten years, especially, I there unfortunately are are just a, a lot of classic movies that I, I, I used to see that that I, I I don't feel comfortable watching anymore because it because I see the ickiness in, in them. And yeah. there 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 are few that I, I you know I I gravitate towards, but there are not very many that, that kind of like sort of pass that like test, the non icking let alone the Bechtel test, but but like the ickiness test. And um <laughs> I, I I I got a lot of work to do still. I know because you know I like Alfred Hitchcock movies, and I I talked to I talked to um, Tippi Hedren. I I interviewed her, and and I know not only from that, but from you know other uh, you know uh, tellings of the the story of the relationship between them that he was just absolutely horrible to her in so many different ways. He ruined her 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 career, and he did just did awful, horrible things to her, and and she's not the only uh, woman that that he did that to. So I I don't know. I've I've got a lot of reconstructing to do, but it's it, you know it's it, it it's there, and that's and that's where so much of this comes from. You're right because well, it, it's it, important it gets stuck in your you, emotional craw. Yeah, it's important that you because. We can't we say this and we're hysterical and we're feminist, which is now some for some reason uh, a slight. We need men to wake up and be our advocate to other men. So when you're in those situations with your dudes and you're hanging out and he says something that's kind of like, nah, dude, that's that's misogynistic. Don't 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 say that. We need you guys there. We need you guys to the other day. uh, My husband and I were were rewatching X-Men 97. Mm -hmm. Um not the not the new version, but the the old one from 1997 um, yeah. or 96. Sorry, the the cartoon. And he noticed how Gambit was just he couldn't take his hands off and couldn't stop complimenting uh, Rogue on her physical appearance, and she was just getting annoyed. Yeah. And he's like, "Man, that's that's creepy. Yeah. That's that's sussy. He's he's bordering on like essaying her. Yeah. And this is coming out of his mouth. And I'm I'm like." As a woman, it's like, oh, yeah, oh, the light comes on over his head and you yeah. know, the angels come down and it's like he got it. Now he's now everything that I've been saying, he's not going to come back with an argument like not that he did, but sometimes he does that. And, and, and you know, and, you know, I've done that to my wife before, too, yeah. like, because I but I, because... when he sees it that I'm my life as just because I have a vagina makes my life difficult. Yeah. Now yeah. you see what I struggle through. It's yeah. and it's not just like when no. you when. Your wife comes home and says, oh, um, I'm treated this way by everybody I meet. Yeah. And she's not being hyperbolic. In some way, shape or form, she's been treated with misogyny by almost every man she's come into contact with. 
And yeah. he may not even be aware of it. It's not just like trying to touch her. It just me the condescension.